It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And Sarah, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? It's Pappy 23. I can barely contain my you excitement. You sound excited or something. I don't yeah, know. well, okay, here's the reason why I'm so excited. I'm so excited to share this with you all because we've tasted it before at different festivals and things, but never before have we owned a actual Pappy bottle. Right. And never before have we owned anything the, that came in this or the, the big dog. Yeah, literally the, the top dog. The 20, so the 23 year. We want to, uh, we're just excited about sharing that with you guys and I, I just can't wait. I hope you guys have lots of fun comments and questions. I'm sure it's a divisive topic, but I feel like, oh, la la. <laughs> You're undressing it. Yes. But did you, so you dressed up for it just to undress it? Are you taking it on a date? I might have dressed up a little bit for it, whatever, so what? I still have a bourbon shirt on. Yeah, you do. If you're not familiar with the story of how we obtained this, we went to a drawing at Total Wine and More, mm -hmm. uh, a lottery, and my ticket number was pulled second. So this is actually a 2017. Mm -hmm. So if my math is right, that means it was distilled in 1994. Wow. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I really, truly wish that I had a video of his reaction because he <laughs> jumped up in the air. It's like one of those freeze frames at the end of movies where they like <laughs> jump up in the air and like kick their feet or whatever. It was like that. <sighs> Anyways, it was like 25 degrees out that morning. Here we go. No, no turning back now. It's over. It's done. It's done. Because if you follow bourbon and you know all the hype around this, these bottles, mm -hmm. you know that this go on a secondary market in the thousands of dollars. Yes. But we we don't really support that secondary. We try not to contribute to it. Yeah. No, people do whatever they have to do and like we don't always agree with it, but we understand the psychology of why, but eh. I mean, it's, that's it's not cool. us and we're here to open it for you right, right now. But so let's do I, it. I do just have to say that that was a little tough. I thought you were going to struggle with it a little bit harder, like knowing that it's like driving a new car off the lot. As soon as you peel that, <sighs> yeah. even just a little bit, the value just goes. But you know what? It's bourbon and it's meant to be drank. It is meant so, to be drank. Here we go. Cork pop. Ooh. If you guys haven't seen uh, Neat, the docu bourbon documentary, uh, you should watch it because Freddie Johnson tells a really good story mm -hmm. about um, drinking Pappy actually with his dad and what his dad told him. So I would go check that out. If you have a hard time cracking bottles and sharing things with other people and you just are keeping it, you're fine. You can hoard if you want to, that's all you. But uh, I would encourage you to go listen to what he has to say about it because it's very touching and it's yeah. changed some people's minds about sharing bourbon. So. Yeah. And as you said, you know, this is, this can be kind of a divisive topic. Right. Um, some people say Pappy Van Winkle is the best bourbon in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's overhyped. I don't know. I mean, I guess people who say it's the best in the world wouldn't say it's overhyped. But I think the majority of people, whether they think it's good or not, would agree that it, it is, is overhyped. Over <laughs> and other people say the 15 is where it's at, or the 20 is where mm -hmm. it's at. When presented with the option of buying the 23, the 20, or the 15, the, the three that I don't have in the collection. It's like, when am I gonna have an opportunity to get the 23 again? I feel like I might be able to get to 15 or the 20, maybe in a couple years, because this took about five years to get. To get, yeah. So that's why I went with the 23. Wanted to start at the top start and work top. down. Yeah, that'll make it easier, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we're, we're talking enough here. Let's, we are. let's get into it. Wow. That is just a nose chock full of <laughs> wood. <laughs> wood, yeah. Yeah, uh, and is that really any surprise? I mean, it's 23 years old in, in Kentucky climate. I feel like if it could be densely packed with flavor, that's how it smells. Super oaky, some nice char, but also mm -hmm. a sweetness to it, which is obviously coming from the mash bill. Of course, Buffalo Trace is where it's made now nowadays. It's the Weedy Mash Bill, the same Ash Bill that's shared with the Weller line, which is why that has become so, so popular. Because trickle you, down Pappy effect. Trickle down Pappy economics, because you have your poor man's Pappy, and um, of course people are crazy about the William Lure Weller and the BTAC line. We are. Yeah, we are, it's amazing. Got if, one of those. Yeah, if you year, have a thankfully. chance to get one of those, but not one of these, go get that. Wow, so. we got a WLW and a Pappy. It's been a really great year. year. It has been a really great year. I got a lot of things I wanted this year. But yeah, it's definitely a, a nose. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's definitely a nose that is 
that you don't come across every day because you things don't. normally aren't presented at, at this age. No. Sometimes you get it blended into a special edition, but right. you know, no, this is it a... all being 23 years old. Um, it's mature, you and, can tell. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, that 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 kind of spice, uh, it's kind of a clove spice and tobacco, the leather, God, I things get a lot that, of that. that come along with the age. All right, well. I just want to get into it. Cheers. Yeah. So much wood. Whoa, it's got a building heat. Man, that builds. Yep. So much barrel. Wow. Char. Wow. And we didn't even talk about the specifics Incredibly of it. Incredibly smooth. No, but of besides, course not. Besides it being 23 Let's talk years, about it. it's 95.6 proof. Okay. So sub 100 proof, but man, that I drinks think... like it's 110, 105. I, yeah, I give it, I give it about 100, 105. Yeah. It's so warming. Like immediately, Ooh, man, and also for a 95er, it's got a long finish. It does have a and long finish. And I'm already finish. getting a hug. I am too. That's what I meant. It's warm. Like I just got wrapped up in a blanket. That is a Kentucky hug there. It's nice, but it's not really rolling into any like deep flavors on the finish. Mm. It's just kind of maintaining. It's maintaining the palette. that wood. Yeah. It gets a little softer mm -hmm. at, towards the finish and becomes a little bit more, you know, those caramely, vanilla -y notes that yeah. come through. But it's all very much in hand with the wood the whole time. Which is good, but if you don't like very oaky things, then this is uh, not gonna be for you. <laughs> and you might not have to worry about it. Like, darn, I won't have to go try well, to find a 23 Well, you know, you could spend me. 200 bucks on a pour at a bar and be extremely disappointed if you're not into totally. oaky things. So. Yeah, totally. And it, uh, it kind of has a, a cigar type of presence it to does. it. It does. That's yeah. a really good way to put it. You just puffed a cigar. You just puffed one of these one of these things. That's right why they here. put it on there. <laughs> and it's... that remnants is in your mouth. It, you have the smokiness, you have the char, you have that tobacco flavor. I mean, mm -hmm. it's totally a cigar. Totally. In glass. Yeah. I mean, for two people who don't really smoke cigars, someone who smokes cigar might be like, well, really, I think this, but <laughs> that's our opinion. <clears throat> the mouthfeel is really good. It's extra silky. It is. It's got some, also some cigar. Different type of. Citrus that I've tasted before on the on the palate. Like when it's just first rolling over your tongue, it's like this. Like if you could get like a really young uh, lemon, what would that taste like? Yeah, like a lemon. It's like hybrid when, orange. But you know when fruit's like underripe. Youthful so. fruit. <laughs> a youthful fruit. A youthful fruit. There's something nice and sweet and desserty in the middle. The oak almost gives way to it just for a moment and then comes back for the finish. But then when it comes back for the finish, there's more of those caramel vanillas. Yeah. But the beginning, it's all oak. I feel like it's just straight up oak and, and that that, well, that useful fruit. I don't know what sure. that is. I'm getting the the barrel more in the middle of the experience. Really? Yeah, in the very beginning, I feel like I'm biting into a fruit that I've never tasted before. Like I'm on some tropical island where only that fruit grows and I'm like, I'm gonna call this Chadberries or whatever. I don't know, I don't know what I would call it. Probably, probably wouldn't call it that. Um, but I bite into it and I'm like, this is new and different. And whoa, where did that barrel and cigar come from yeah. in this? It's like- Is this a barrel aged fruit? It's a tobacco yeah. tree. No, I mean, like overall, I think this is super interesting. It's unlike most things that you can find, mm -hmm. I think because of the age, you get all of that barrel influence and the smoothness and the sweetness, but it's still powerful. Like, yes, it's it 95, is. yes, it's weeded, but it's still very powerful. I feel like I just, uh, like two minutes ago, I ate something that had a lot of black pepper in it. I'm getting a lot of black there's pepper some, and clove spices remaining all throughout my mouth. I get that hanging too, yes. that lingering. It's, it's a different, <laughs> I'll say this about the Pappy 23, it's a different experience. I was about to say, it's an experience. Than any other bourbon that I can remember anyway <laughs> and that's the thing about trying this at festivals mm -hmm. you're trying a lot of other stuff right so to get a bottle and you It'd know be... and really dissect it and spend time with it you know that's that's what we wanted to do and that's yes. why we got it that's and that's why we wanted to open it with you oh. mm. i guess we like you <laughs> no i mean like us too please subscribe <laughs> by the way hit that thumbs up <laughs> it's not your it's not an everyday it is certainly not an everyday <laughs> certainly, certainly. Not an everyday. No. This is a special occasion, but also specific mood. Like it could be yeah. a special occasion, but if you're not in the mood for that, like sm it's literally smoky mouth, almost. <laughs> smoky mouth. If you're not in the mood for that. Give it a season. Cause I'm not gonna say winter. I'm gonna say it's gonna more say, like spring or fall. I was thinking fall. Yeah. I'm thinking early spring, 
like when it's still chilly outside. Yeah. Uh, there's it's still a, a chance of it's snow. It's a flannel bourbon. Flannel bourbon. It's a flannel or bourbon. Or the tail end of fall right before winter when it's like campfires mm. and yeah, crisp fall air and you wake up in the morning and there's frost on the ground. Like I said, we said it's an experience and I think this is a, a, something that you need to think on. So I'm like, yes, share it with someone, but also don't share it like at a party, not because you shouldn't give it away. You can do whatever you want. But I think it's something that's conversational and you need to be sitting with like one or two other people who you know can sit quietly <laughs> and like absorb it and think about it and have a discussion about it. Like more, treat it more like a book club than like a- It, it begs to be talked about. It sure I does. Think so. It really yeah. does. It does, it does. So I think let's talk about price, recommendation, and any other thoughts and feelings that you have about this. Well, price, we, we got this at retail, but I think it was marked up a little bit more than slightly than marked usual. Up. It was like 350. Unless the MSRP's just gone up. Yeah, and I think MSRP last I heard was like 280. Yeah. So I think, you know, they raised it up a little bit, but it's also the 2017. Uh, there, so was maybe. there was two bottles of 2017, and then they had like six or seven of the 2018s, maybe five or six actually. And I got the 2017 because I was like, eh, well, it's already a year older, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, probably harder to find than this year's, I guess. So I got the 2017. Yeah. And I don't know if that's why it was a little bit more expensive. I'm not sure. But but still. Let's just say $350. Um, which I think most people would say is a really great deal compared to, to the secondary, secondary prices, which where it's can like be. like 1800 2000 Yes. $350 for this, I think, is definitely worth it from a collector standpoint. From a curiosity standpoint, I support that. Mm hmm. Uh, if you've been like me and you've been chasing this bottle for years and you see it for that price, you're gonna jump at the opportunity. I will recommend it. Yes. Same. I feel exactly <laughs> the same. Okay. However. Yeah. Let's if, get into that. Okay. If given the opportunity, you put this and a bottle of Weller Antique Collection BTAC or George T. Stag, and you say you can have this one for three fifty, or you can have this one for a hundred. Or I could, if I paid three fifty for both of those two, I mean, I would take the antique collection one over the other, because I actually like to drink. I like the flavors of yeah. both of those better than this. Yes. Not that this is bad. I just prefer. Yeah. So that's that's what we're segueing into is now. Let's look at it from strictly a taste point of view. So taking the collectability, taking the experience and the clout mm -hmm. uh, out of it from merely a is this bottle of bourbon worth $350. I would say it doesn't taste like it to me. I could see the 280. I could because of the age and the flavors that the age has imparted. And I know that every year they keep it, it costs them more. So they, they got to pass that on to you. Sure. Totally get that and I'm fine with it. I mean, I understand the price, but that's, that's not the angle I'm going for, for just, you know, if this wasn't on here, yes, it was unage stated. Would I feel like this is a $350 drink? or bottle. Um, I, I would say no, not for me. It's just a little too oaked. I personally wouldn't pay that much yeah. for this taste profile there you go. for myself. Right. I would rather take that money mm -hmm. and I would rather spend it on something in the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, yeah. specifically the Weller or the Stag. All right, so we, we, we kind of talked about this and normally our rule is if it's over 100, we add water. This is 95 and some change, but I feel like people it's are a 23 gonna... year, so we don't, you know, we just, so we're gonna experiment. And I feel like people are gonna have a lot of questions. Like, I think we're damned if we do, damned if we don't at this point. If we add water, people are gonna be like, how dare you add water to Pappy 23? And if we don't, people are gonna be like, it really well, opens I... up with a few drops of water. Yes. So we, we had the tiniest of sips left, and we added what? Three. Just three drops of water. Now, so we're gonna okay. give this a second. We're gonna let it sit. Be right back. And we're back, <laughs> but the time hasn't passed yet. Uh, while we wait, we just want to tell you guys that if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. If you like what we're doing here, you can hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. You can give us a thumbs up if you like, or a question or comment down below. Also want to tell you about our new home for our merch like this and other whiskey t-shirts and glassware and, and, uh, and things, which is whiskeyambitions.com. It's a whiskey ambitions trading company. So if you'd like, please check that out. 
We got this bottle because of our patrons and their support. It's patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and they are a great community that participate in awesome conversations, but they also give us a little monthly donation so that we can come by things like this and pass that information on to you. Uh, you can shop our Amazon influencer page. It's amazon.com slash shop slash it's bourbon night for glassware and all kinds of whiskey lifestyle accessories. Everything you need for your bourbon night. That's right. And lastly, you can follow us on all the social media channels at it's bourbon night. All right, so we're gonna give this about 10 more minutes. We'll be back and see what this water is done. Okay, so we're back, and I know we just already did our recommend segment, uh, but we just decided kind of last minute we're, we were going to do the water thing. So we let it sit. We for, sidebarred, we argued, yeah. we debated. <laughs> we didn't argue. um, again, the, the smallest amount with just three tiny drops of water. I don't know if you can see. And we're going to see what, what happened here. It really brought that fruit forward. Yeah, it's very fruit forward now. Caramelized berries or like a sugar coated, like if you like reduce blueberries and sugar down to make a sauce. Mmm, that smells good. I think it kind of almost gave it a little bit more of a syrup quality. Oak is still very Ford. Yeah, I don't think you can <laughs> change, There's no way around that. Change that, but it gave it more of a fruity Swedish, not mm -hmm. Swedish as in Swedish, like Swedish fish. chef, <laughs> or fish, but like sweet-ish ish. Um, type of flavor. It's interesting in water. I would recommend experimenting. I agree. If you have a bottle with I, a few drops of water. Yeah. It, it does, definitely does some things. Yeah, definitely try it neat first. <sighs> then like you can gradually add more water until you get it to where you feel like you're getting the most flavors that you want out of it. Yeah. I wouldn't go straight for the water and I certainly wouldn't go straight for the ice. I'm gonna say I like it both. I like it both ways. Both ways, sans water and with water. I prefer the nose with water. Yeah, 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 me too, me too. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it changed it dramatically, but no. it, it did change some things up and and I would, when presented, I would, you know, either either way. All right, well. I'm glad we did this. Yeah. What fun, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Week. Yeah, 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 I hope you, uh, you know, typically we're reviewing more like uh, daily drinkers, occasionally we do kind of the unicorns and it's fun to do. It is fun. Um, for us and hopefully for you guys too. Yeah, so. we hope you guys aren't like, why yeah. are you reviewing something I'll never be able to get? <laughs> Well, that'll do it for us. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, guys. Um, you know, what can we say? It's it's a, it's a milestone, it's another step in our- In our bourbon in our, journey. In our career here, so yeah. So thanks a lot, and uh, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, well, that'll do it for us. Until next time, <laughs> drink more bourbon. I feel like this is the wisest old man I've ever seen. I want to just absorb his knowledge from this bottle. I just want to do this all day. <laughs>